excited to have everyone with us today to talk about the multiple choice section for the listening exam for the FCE and CHI exams or uh, the first and the advanced exams from Cambridge. And this is really going to help you if you're having trouble with this exam, you feel like you're guessing a lot because in this webinar, we're going to reveal some tips that help you choose more confidently on the B2 first and C1 advanced listening exams. And I want to tell you about our webinarista for today. We have Javier Perez Villalta. He is the academic logistics supervisor at the Anglo. He has worked in English language teaching for more than 15 years. He graduated from LEI with a bachelor's in English language teaching from the UNAM, and he holds the Cambridge University C2 language certificate, meaning he's taken these exams before. He knows, he really knows, and he's taught, of course, numerous preparation courses throughout his extensive career. Javier, we are thrilled to have you with us today. Thank you, Emily. Thank you very much. Hey everyone, como están? Nah, it's okay, it's English, don't worry. Thank you very much, guys, for coming. I'm really excited, more than excited, I'm gonna use the word flabbergasted. That's the word today. Flabbergasted. <laughs> Have you ever heard that word? Like, pretty excited, pretty happy to be here, so thank you very much for having me. And yes, today we're gonna, we're going to present this information for you about um, how these exams work, especially in the part of listening. OK, so let's start by sharing the screen. So this is going to get busy. Thank you very much. Let me just find the correct button here. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, well, yeah, so how many times, right? We have found this ourselves in these situations where we have to choose A, B, or C, or D. Oh, no, 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 it's kind of difficult, but hopefully we'll get some tips out of here. So thanks for the introduction, Emily. Well, my name is Javier. Yes, I'm working at the Anglo now. I'm a bit rust in this part of teaching, but I'm really happy, really flabbergasted to be here. So let's start. So <clears throat> first of all, what will you encounter on, the, on these tests? Well, Formerly known as FCE or CAE, uh, now the 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 updated name should be B2 first or C1 advanced. Okay, you know. <laughs> so well, listening. Yeah, how many times we have found observes in that? Well, uh, we have four parts here. If you ever taken it, or if you're currently taking your classes at the Anglo, I'm sure you're pretty familiarized with these concepts. So we have the multiple choice. Let's say short because it's a short conversation. Then we have the sentence completion, where you have to write some ideas there. Multiple matching, who says what? And then one, once again, multiple choice, but this time for a longer conversation. If we do the math, well, you can you can check that multiple choice stands for 15 points out of 30. Okay, the total for that is 30 points, multiple choice being 15, basically half, okay? Same case with C1 advanced or CAE, as you wish. Right, multiple choice, the short uh, extracts six points. And on the long section, well, we have six points, 12 is almost half. So, as you can see, guys, this multiple choice thing, well, this uh, kind of exercises is kind of uh, are basically half of the evaluation. Let me give you something really important, something about numbers. You know, numbers don't lie. <laughs> so, 30 questions here maximum what is the minimum to pass if you want to take the if you're taking the b2 first what is the minimum out of 30 questions you should get 18 correct so you say okay i passed i don't know you guys but i'm really uh when when i answer these exams i'm i'm all about numbers like what is the minimum i the minimum sorry i need so if i get this point straight oh i'm on the other side so i feel kind of Relax because I have this, I got this, I got the minimum score, so I'm okay. So I invite you well, if you're interested, well, you can check on the site, like the exact points required for each uh, skill or each grade. Same case for CAE, same case for advanced, but well, let's specialize a bit more on this uh, B2 first section. So, right. So, once again, coming back to this 15 points, so guys, important is basically 15% of the score half of the score. So the interesting here is that if you uh, 
master this procedure, this approach to multiple choice. I'm all about it. Basically, you're on the other side. OK, I, I, I reckon it's kind of difficult, but I'm sure that if you got if you get to master this uh, this way, you'll be fine. You'll be really feel safer and even more motivated, like, OK, I'm here so I can pass. I can do this. So please really, I hope I hope this can be really uh, helpful for you. Mm -hmm. So guys, thank you very much. Why is listening so difficult? Because we're on exams, we're in the Anglo, we're in our courses and says, oh, the listening exam. Why is listening so difficult? I'm opening the chat for you guys. Write on the chat. Emily will help me out here. Write on the chat. Why is listening so difficult? What, what is the things that, oh, listening? Please write in the chat. Do you have some ideas, Emily? Okay, Roxana says the accent. The and accent. Antonio says quality of audio. Karen agrees the accents or sometimes the speed. Okay, let's go. Thank you very much. And let's go first for accent. Yeah, I know that Brit British <laughs> British accent can be quite complicated, especially if we're not used to that, compared maybe to American. But well, let's look on the brighter side. That's the beautiful part of the language. All the accents, all the different things. Come on, we're, for example, here in Mexico, people from Monterrey, from Yucatan will speak different, or maybe here, people from Argentina. I mean, so it's the same. I know it can be complicated, guys, but let's let's be positive. You know, let's be positive. Um, try to try to get more into this. You know, try to get more familiarized with this. The best tip I can give you, I used to give my students as well. The best thing, of course, is to practice. You watch series you like, get some phrases, but the the, the, the hard part is be something that it, it that you like. You know, for example, nowadays I think there's this series called Peaky Blinders. If you like that one, well, go for it, because if you say, well, America's got talent, <laughs> it's gonna be hard. But really, do something for that accent. It's beautiful. It's difficult, but well, let's go for it. Yes, you were also saying the the audio that sometimes it, it sounds a bit muffled, right? Like, well, maybe practice a bit <laughs> with your old stereo, maybe that you have over there. <laughs> yeah, I know it can be complicated, guys, but try to be motivated. Try to look on the bright side and hopefully these tips, these ideas will help you a lot, will help you tremendously. I don't know. Do you have another one, Emily? For those. Oh yeah, we have so many. Let's see. Um, uh, Monse says it can be kind of tricky because sometimes more than one answer could be right. Yes, more than one answer could, but it is not. Today we're going to find out that trick. Trust me. Thank you very much. Another another one, Hemi. Please. Ah, That's um, fantastic. For sure. And Adon says uh, sometimes the speakers use synonyms. Yes, actually, that's one of the tips I'll give you. Yeah, synonyms. I, I, I won't say much. I won't say much because I want to save it because that's that's actually one of the the keys. I will give you the keys to the Lamborghini, you know, so <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of, of those. Very good guys. Real. Thank you very much. Very participative. That's really good. So yeah, conclusion. I know listening is difficult, but hmm, let's do this. Let's practice because uh, after time and after time with students all along the way, not only here at the Anglo, but the old place I've worked, I've come up, I've come across this scenario, this situation that, well, let's do this. I will share this video and keep in mind, what is this video about? Please write on the chat. What is this video about? It's very short, like 40 seconds. Just watch it. What is this video about? Let's go. What the hell is all this? Ah, Brian, you're here. Good. Okay, uh, let me give you the rundown. Uh, this is your work area. Please keep personal knickknacks tasteful. You get 25 minutes for lunch and um, uh, enjoy it here. Welcome aboard. Yes? Uh, it's Brian. Oh, yes, the new fellow. Come on in. Uh, what, what uh, exactly am I supposed to do? You pick up the phone and you sell, sell, sell. But before you go thinking it's all seriousness, the first Friday of every month is Wacky Tacky Tie Day. So, you know, start thinking up some fun 
tacky ties to wear. Oh, we're, uh, we're done. Thank you very much. Guys, write in the chat. What, what is this video about? I mean, what's going on? Um, I'm, I'm listening to some answers. Antonio says the first day at work. First day at work. Thank you very much. Another one. Uh, Aurora agrees. Um, yeah, we get we're getting a lot of uh, agreement here. Elizabeth also agrees. About okay. the work schedule says uh, Mireya. Arriving at a new job. Thank you very much, guys. Pretty much you're correct. So as you can see, you didn't have problems with listening because you already understand the idea. You get the idea. But what if I ask you this? What can be unfair about the boss? A, he's unsure about what to do. B, he has an absolute rig uh, and rigid posture. Or C, he seems authoritarian, but it's also easygoing. Guys, now in the chat, A, B, or C, what is the correct answer for this question? I, I won't show the video again. I hope you remember. <laughs> what can you tell me about this? What can we've got a lot books? of answers here. I'm cool. seeing B, C, A, B, C, B, C, C, B. All Ooh, right. A big mix, a big mix. There's a salad. Thank you very much, Emily. OK, people, the reality is you know what the video is about because you understand. But what is the problem? The questions. The answer actually here is C. Because he's like, oh, Brian, you're here. Well, you're going to do this. Oh, but everything is also funny. You can do this and that. The answer is C. I will not show it again because I want to go with my theory. Well, <laughs> I'm still working on that. But guys, the problem is not the listening, but the questions. You understand pretty much what's going on. You get the detail you're like, oh, I get it, you know. But the problem is if you don't know what you're being asked, forget it so guys the first and most important part here in everything and actually not only listening but for all the questions is understand what you're being asked if you don't get this point it's gonna be useless to try to guess so that's why we tend to guess it's like ah oh, i heard this or maybe this one mm -hmm. so we're gonna check some tips about it i just want to say there's two kinds of of, of ideas here when we watch series, we're on Facebook, we're on this movies, whatever. We listen to things because we like. So I'll, let's call it listening for pleasure, you know, general idea and stuff. However, the recommendation here is to uh, to work with these skills. I'll give you an example. Uh, for example, I'm not a reader. I'm not an avid reader. However, I got my reading with the maximum because it's not about reading for pleasure. It's about concentrating or focusing on the strategies for this exam. Same case with listening. Uh, of course, I listen to a lot of things. I like it. I, I compensate, <laughs> but the same. I mean, I, I try to listen as much as I like, and therefore, well, I have this, this uh, that it's easy for me. So I really, really, really recommend guys that uh, practice the strategies. It's not about how much you read, you listen, 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 because if you listen without a purpose, without kind of being focused on what you have to do, it's meaningless. So please understand the question. Uh, well, we have some listening strategies over here. Uh, I'll be a bit into teaching. <laughs> what we as teachers are, are supposed to do with you guys in class is practicing these skills, these strategies, well, sub skills, let's call it this practice. The first one is listening for guests. What is guest? General information. What is this about? Just like we watched with the video, we did with the video. What is this video about? Okay, that's so you have a general idea. You are in context. That's it. Second one, and the important, in my opinion, for these activities, listening for detail, specific information that is like, oh, this is the answer. Oh, I got it. If you don't get those ideas, mm, that's the difficult part. I know, but th this is it, right? Finally, also for this, uh, this part, inference, like you infer what you're listening. For example, like the question, you know, what can be inferred about the boss? Like, mm, it seems this, it seems that. So guys, all of these aspects, let's say sub skills, 
are the ones that you are required to practice for this kind of exercise, except, uh, well, uh, especially multiple choice, okay? In my opinion, one more time, I'll go a bit more for detail, but well, all of this make, um, let's say, the triangle of multiple choice uh, thing, okay? So let's let's go with this. I hope not to be very <laughs> worried with this, but let's go. So guys, tip number one, familiarize yourself, get yourself with this situation. What is going on? Then again, listening for guests. In an exam, on an exam, sorry, you were given this, uh, these questions. If you can check that out, number two. Number two, you hear two people talking about a water sports center. Okay, people talking maybe in Starbucks about water sports center. Okay, I got it. That's the idea. Of course, you're going to listen to water sports center words, you know, but here is the important part. Focus on the main question. Remember, the problem is not the listening. Understand the question. Don't get distracted with the options, at least not yet. My recommendation is don't get distracted with the options, not yet. Go for the question. What is the main question here? The man says the center should. Okay, the question here is what is the man's opinion that the center should do? Okay, so even we could cover this because the most important step here, guys, is pay attention to the main thing. All right, make notes. Now, I'm um, I'm a bit unsure about it. I don't remember <laughs> in my times <laughs> we were given like an extra sheet or you can write on the on the booklet on the exam. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I'm sorry I owe it to you, but I think you can write on the booklet of the exam. So, well, try to make notes or make notes on your hands. I don't know, but try to make notes about this question. What is the recommendation that the man uh, has for the center? You know, anyway, Coming back to what one of uh, our beautiful attendees told us before. Yes, find the cue or the synonyms that express the main question. This is the answer. OK, if you find uh, the, the trick here, it, it's actually funny because sometimes it seems as is they're not testing listening, but your ability to catch synonym ideas, synonym vocabulary, you know, guys, what is a synonym for? The man says the center should. What is a synonym for should? Please write on the chat. Another way to say that the man, imagine that the man says, oh, the center should. Of course, he's not going to say should. What ideas can he say? Uh, I believe that, mm, or maybe my recommendation is, or mm, I would like, mm, or maybe I wish they, mm, those are kind of recommendations, okay? Synonym ideas for a recommendation, okay? So, well. Javi, uh, we've got some answers here. Um, nope. uh, Rafael says ought to. Aurora says could. Sin says might have. We have must suggest it's advisable that. My exactly. advice is. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, those are the ones. They will not say the man. The man will never say, well, I think the center should. <laughs> that will be too easy, right? So you are down to get this synonym idea, this skew like, oh, this is the answer. Here it comes. So be prepared for that. That is the challenge. OK, in my experience, guys, yes, the context is OK. But my my most important point will be this one. Focus on the question and get the cue or the synonyms like eh, here it comes. Here it goes. OK, so. Remember in this certificate, well, you will listen twice. You will listen to the audio twice. You have a second chance. So maybe the first one focus on the question and then the second time you can compare the information that you have maybe in your notes or the ones that you got down, you know, it's so like, OK, I think that the closest is this one. And remember also eliminating things. It's a, an, another alternative. But if you follow this one, you should get the answer like in no time, hopefully, you know. So enough talk. Let's give it a try. You ready? Let's go with this, guys. A typical uh, B2 FC exercise, multiple choice. Be prepared. Remember the tips. General idea, specific question, and get some synonyms for the specific questions. Let's go. Tell me the answer A, B, or C at the end. Question two. You hear two people talking about a water sports center. 
So, how did you like the new sports centre? <laughs> well, there's a wide choice of things to do. It's just that their advertisement said something to suit all the family. Uh -huh. I wish they'd had water games for the under fives. There was nothing really suitable for them. But you can learn to windsurf or sail, and you have the freedom to go anywhere in the lake. Isn't that a bit dangerous? <laughs> Not really. Nobody's allowed in the water without a life jacket, and a rescue boat is on hand all the time. Mm, sounds great. <laughs> it was. I'm... So, how did you like the new sports centre? <laughs> well, there's a wide choice of things to do. It's just that their advertisement said something to suit all the family. Uh -huh. I wish they'd had water games for the under fives. There was nothing really suitable for them. But you can learn to windsurf or sail, and you have the freedom to go anywhere in the lake. Isn't that a bit dangerous? <laughs> Not really. Nobody's allowed in the water without a life jacket, and a rescue boat is on hand all the time. Mm, sounds great. <laughs> it was. Thank you very much. That was it. I hope it was fine. So following this procedure, chat, chat, A, B, or C. I'm listening. I, I have to tell you, Javi, it's, uh, I believe, with uh, it's unanimously B. Wow, what? Say that again. Everyone says B. Everyone says B, B really? B as in beautiful. Uh, we have one We have one now here. Not sure, maybe it's C. But uh, the majority say B. Well, the answer is B. The answer is B, very good. But I don't I don't need just the B. I need you to tell me why. Like Backstreet Boys, tell me why. Guys, tell me why the answer is B. B, what do you say? Like, oh, here, here, the man said this is B. Please write on the chat. What was the thing that you say? Oh, it's B. I'm listening. Rafa says, I wish it had activities for users under five. Okay, anyone else? Thank you. What do you say, B? Did you guess? No, please. <laughs> A uh, Christian says something similar. The man says a uh, more activities for under five and Lara agree. Sorry, Angelica agrees. Um, uh, and Ugo. OK, Ugo says I'm happy everyone stood by their original answer. Changing their minds last minute can also be dangerous, can't it, Javi? Yes, I, I recommend that. Yes, thank you very much for that. Do you have the answer? Don't don't change. Well, uh, the thing is, it, it doesn't work the same for everyone. Listen to your heart. <laughs> but you were correct, guys. Actually, I wrote the exact cue. I wish they had games for under fives. Oh, come on. That's B. Offer activities for small children. So great job. I'm happy to hear that everyone, almost everyone, write B. If you didn't, don't worry, guys. It's okay. This is the thing to practice. So as you can see, the cue. The words that gave me the answer was, I wish I had water games for the under fives. Totally the synonym for letter B. So guys, trust me, if you follow this method, this procedure, you can go wrong, you can miss. Of course, I know it's hard, but well, good job. Guess what? We have more practice. So please remember, what are the tips? Let's have some other goals. I really need to try this with you guys. So let's practice, but first remember the tips. Number one, guest, general idea, what's going on? I mean, if if you want to take a picture screenshot, this is the time, okay, guys? I'm leaving this one. Number one, general idea. Number two, focus your attention on the detail. I mean, the question, what are they asking me, okay? Is my opinion? No, it's not my opinion, it's others' opinion. Well, focus on that question. Number three, get the cue, the synonym idea, some phrase that will say, this is the answer, this is the answer. And finally, check options and decide. So guys, basically this is the one, two, three, four for this exercise, which hopefully you'll get down pretty easily. Let's practice one more time. If you need this information, well, don't worry. One more time, have a screenshot, have a photo, write it down get a tattoo <laughs> please remember this this is the the one okay let's move on let's practice guys yeah this is all about practice hopefully you'll get uh mechanized this this idea mechanized sorry so let's go i'll give you just time 
get yourself acquainted with this question. You hear a professional tennis player talking about her career. What annoys her most about interviewers? Mm. You are thinking of an alternative now of what annoys her most about interviewers? About interviewers. Okay. Mm. Let's get busy. Go. Question three. You hear a professional tennis player talking about her career. Are you ever annoyed by interviewers? Well, I'm often asked about the financial side of things. I don't mind, but I can honestly say for many tournaments, I don't even know what the prize money is. I just focus on playing to my full potential. They must find that answer disappointing. No, the ones I have a problem with are those who assume it's all about partying and gossip. I wish they'd ask about the real lifestyle, practicing day in, day out, and getting from tournament to tournament. I probably do around a hundred long-haul flights a year. It sounds exciting, but it wipes you out and actually ruins your social life. Are you ever annoyed by interviewers? Well, I'm often asked about the financial side of things. I don't mind, but I can honestly say for many tournaments, I don't even know what the prize money is. I just focus on playing to my full potential. They must find that answer disappointing. No, the ones I have a problem with are those who assume it's all about partying and gossip. I wish they'd ask about the real lifestyle, practicing day in, day out, and getting from tournament to tournament. I probably do around a hundred long-haul flights a year. It sounds exciting, but it wipes you out and actually ruins your social life. Okay. Answers in the chat, please. What is it? What is it? I mean, we've got a lot of A's, a lot of A's. <laughs> OK, continue, guys, please, please. OK, and we're getting some uh, justification here. Uh, Victorio says, annoy is synonym to problem. So that's why uh, that why he says that he thinks it's A. And Elizabeth also says, Partying, gossip, it ruins her social life. Those are some of the keywords she identified, and Claudia agrees. Yes, the correct answer is A. Good job. Now, Jess, why? Tell me why you chose A. Good job. You're telling me about partying, that it ruins. Very good. You're getting the cues. You're getting the ideas, guys. Yes, the part, instead of saying, what annoys me most? No, she says my real problem. I don't know something like that. You know, like my real problem is or I have a problem with. That's the good answer, guys. Good job. I hope Emily that no one has written B or C. Please. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Great job. Great job. You got it. You really got it. Ah, let's do one more. OK, very good, guys. Next one. OK, I'll keep my mouth shut this time. You know what to do. Hey, ho, let's go. Question five. You hear two people talking about a program they saw on TV. Did you watch that program about the Gobi Desert last night? I thought it'd be really interesting because it's a part of the world I know very little about. The photography was brilliant, wasn't it? Yes. You could really feel how harsh the life was there. Overwhelmingly grey, I thought. It'd be hard to feel cheerful living in that landscape. It was a bit short on facts, though, wasn't it? I don't think it was that kind of programme. They just wanted you to be amazed at the fantastic landscape. I guess that's why there wasn't much commentary. You're right. I hadn't thought of that. Did you watch that programme about the Gobi Desert last night? I thought it'd be really interesting because it's a part of the world I know very little about. The photography was brilliant, wasn't it? Yes. You could really feel how harsh the life was there. Overwhelmingly grey, I thought. It'd be hard to feel cheerful living in that landscape. It was a bit short on facts, though, wasn't it? I don't think it was that kind of programme. They just wanted you to be amazed at the fantastic landscape. 
I guess that's why there wasn't much commentary. You're right. I hadn't thought of that. Thank you very much. Answers in the chat, please. Let's go. It's the last chance. I mean, we've got lots of C's. Lots, lots of, of C's. C's. OK. Yes. OK, yes, the answer is C. Very good. But now write why. What was the thing that she said? Like, oh, it's C, it's C. That's the answer. Hey, Angelica writes short on facts and Elizabeth <laughs> agrees. Penelope, we got several people writing a uh, short on facts. Totally. Yeah, as you can see, guys, this really works. You're focused on the question, you're focused on this cues that activate and boom, you get the answer. And I'm sure you were, I, I hope you were kind of relaxed with this, like, OK, I got it, I got it. So yes, very well, very well. Great job, guys. I have nothing more to say. I really hope you get this uh, method down. So now just to wrap it up, how was this? Was it easy, difficult? Was this useful? Did you already know this? Like, uh, nothing new or it's like, hey, I never thought of this. Come on, guys, the chat is yours. Remember, in the end, this is for you. This is to help you. This is our job here. So please write any, any idea, guys, that you can you want to share with us about this? Hopefully, you, Maria. Hmm? Oh, sorry, sorry, Maria and Angelica say it's been very useful, and Rafael says his uh, that your advice really works, and he thanks you a bunch. Great job, Aurora I'm happy says. To hear that. Excellent tips. Fabricio says great info. We take it for granted all the time. I think you're right, Fabricio. That's that's true. Eh? That sometimes the simplest things we take for granted. That's a good point. Exactly, but the purpose as well suggested by Emily at the beginning is not that you guess. It's like, oh, I heard this. No, no, no. Really work your way out. Guys, the keys to the Ferrari <laughs> is to practice and develop these strategies. Keep on listening, but work with this. Really, really work with this. Find your own way. Find your own strategy. This is something that has worked with me, that my teachers, I took the best of this advice, you know, and then I passed this to my students ooh, some time ago, <laughs> but really find your own strategy, have your certain steps to follow, and hopefully you get it right. And you know what? I really want to share this, that the best part is that you feel like <sighs> tranquil, relaxed. I got this because if not, you know, your, your, your emotions go like, oh my God, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. No, no, no. What we want the, the best tip I can give you is be relaxed, be calm. Everything will going to be fine. All right. Find your own strategy. So thank you very much. We'll already discuss this. Sorry. What ideas you find useful. OK, so guys, I took everything from the Cambridge English page on the CambridgeEnglish.org page. You can find a lot of practice for exams. You don't want that. Just Google it. Be to first listening practice, reading practice, whatever practice you want. And well, I took something from the book we use here at the Anglo as well. The first trainer this is the one we use for the preparation courses. So pretty much my material was there. You know, YouTube, <laughs> everything you can find. You have it now, guys, on the Internet. So thank you very much. That's all, folks. So nice to I couldn't see you, but so nice to know you're there. Thank you very much, guys. So no, thank you, Javi. Thank you so much. Um, I, I do want to share it because Roxana wrote something really, I think that probably rings true for many people today. She says it was so useful for me to receive these tips because she often overthinks and feels overwhelmed. And I think that's very true for a lot of people, Roxana. And Javi's tips today really keep it simple, right? Read the question, analyze, listen for gist, listen for detail, and you know it. You know the listening, as he pointed out in the beginning. You understand. You just got to make sure you understand the question. So thank you. I'm, I'm really glad that you pointed that out, Roxana. I know that you're not alone in that, right? And um, I have to say, Fabricio uh, says that the trainer rocks and... That's very true. And and Javi, as you point out, there are so many ways to to um, practice. There are lots of tools out there, but I do think that we need to make sure that we're using the appropriate resources. And and I love to use the one from from a Cambridge because we know that that's a real resource. They know what they're talking about there. Correct. But. Uh,